I just look at the paper or do I look at the camera? Dear Mr. Wiesel, We first read your story, Night, together as a part of a project at the University of Toronto. The seven of us belong to a youth group that is part of a Catholic parish in our community. We discussed how your book could be used as a text within high school classrooms. The loss of faith that you experienced was something that we all found really profound and emotional. After reading and discussing Night, we were also wondering about your life after the war. How can we create possibilities to make the world a better place? We would like to end our letter by taking this opportunity to once again thank you for sharing such a difficult part of your life story. We're thinking about ways that we could engage new teachers in the experience of a text. While a number of curriculum theorists talk about children as authors of curriculum, there's a paucity of empirical examples of children authoring curriculum in the world. And we know most curriculum is actually not even authored by teachers. It's actually authored by policymakers or academics and, and superimposed on classrooms. So we had this thought that what would happen if young people and student teachers collectively developed curriculum for a book like Night? We formed this group, Will, Jason, Anna, Sarah, and myself, who better to collaborate with than this community of teachers that I had sort of, you know, luckily come to know um, in, my, in my teaching at University of Toronto. Anna had worked for a number of years with a youth group in Etobicoke and suggested that we develop a collaboration or opportunities for the youth to learn together with us. I've been working within my community in West Toronto um, through a faith-based organization and it's primarily surrounded around um, social outreach. They began coming into my classroom sharing reading opportunities with students and some of them have read texts with us numerous times. I worked for a small school called Life Learning Academy that I helped to start for mostly court involved kids. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to work with an artist named Tim Rollins um, and a, a group called Kids of Survival. And Tim works with children with classical literature and uses art as a form of inquiry. So we actually developed a, an art in installation at the Jewish Museum in San Francisco. So this impetus to paint on book pages was not one I came up with. So when I was told we were going to bring art into our experience of reading night. Um, I didn't know how I felt about it. I was kind of excited, but uh, also wary because I do art at home. I'm an artist at home, but I'd never brought the intellectual aspect into my art. So as a teacher educator, I wanted to find ways to encourage my students to use the arts as a, as a form of inquiry and engagement for young people. Um, because in my experience, uh, many young people find their experiences with text to be very um, stultifying and, and traditional, and their experiences of literacy out of school to be far more engaging. Um, this image is a map of all of the markings that were used for so-called undesirables by the Nazis. So, um, for example, the uh, triangle, the pink triangle, is that familiar? The symbol of gay rights, gay pride, right? This is an inversion of the symbol that was used by the Nazis for um, homosexuals. And for Jews, they had the additional, the, the additional yellow star. So during the Holocaust, triangles were an image that were traditionally used um, as a form of identification. So uh, various people um, who were identified as belonging to certain groups who the Nazis designated as um, inferior um, 
groups of people were given uh, these triangles, and so there were um, a whole range of different triangles that were designated for different groups, communists, um, homosexuals, um, and Jews um, obviously had the yellow um, star, which was um, actually two triangles on top of the other. Because the triangles were traditionally um, affixed to people who didn't want them, uh, we were going to take control over the triangles and we were going to create a new color. In looking at the finished product, the process of that color choosing was actually where the learning and the reflection and the real value um, was happening. I've taught the Holocaust in history classes, and in those experiences, it's been so difficult to bring the students into that history. At school, when you are asked to read something and then go deeper into it, it's usually just here are your questions, give them to me by this time, and you get a mark. So you really, you're not really focused on what the book actually says, you're more focused on what you should say to get a good mark. And this art project, because it wasn't in school and because it was more of a, an open kind of discussion, I felt it was very different and very effective. When we brought the students into the classroom and they started painting, that's when I started to feel, okay, this is great. Part of what I took away from that experience was um, the, the actual uh, act of painting the triangles in the classroom uh, with the students that came in from high school, um, and particularly the student who was in our little group of painters um, was memorable to me because of the fact that she talked about night while she was painting it and she said this stroke represents this part of the book that I connected with and this part this is I'm choosing this color specifically because of this thing that is really important to me and this is how it connects to night so um, it was it was good in the sense that it, it opened my eyes to um, seeing that students can talk about and connect with a book intellectually um, and express it through art and you can still have that conversation with them while they're doing it. At school the only experiences I had with the Holocaust were through studying um, in my textbooks. Um, the only reason I went over it was to basically pass my test so I never really got that in-depth emotional experience. So when I read Night, that's what I really enjoyed. Well, I only had too many exposures to the Holocaust in school. Um, we covered the Holocaust in grade 10 through the history curriculum, and I read a book for English class in grade 11. And I didn't really like the way that it was taught because I felt like it was more factual based since we were being tested on dates and events and even in history class, I felt that what I really got most out of it was the video that our history teacher showed us depicting the cruel brutality that the Jews were put through. My experience with responding to literature based on the Holocaust was always through written form. When I was a high school student, um, it was always you would read a text and then you would write an essay on it or a series of paragraphs or some sort of journal response and painting as a way of responding to uh, night was really different for me, especially as a teacher candidate who was learning how to teach different texts. And so I think it just reinforced the whole concept of multi-literacies and how there is more than one way to respond to a text, and especially one as powerful as night. I started to see the kids take on this sort of multi-literacies role in the project where they were questioning what it meant to build curriculum within a classroom and bringing in their own experiences. 
it through a very multimodal approach as well by integrating art. So it was, it was messy, um, but that's, that's sort of what literacy and multi-literacies is all about. When I started reflecting on that and saying, okay, like, wow, look at these young people and what they're getting out of that text, and they're bringing in all these different ideas from all the experiences they have that are part of their identity, questioning race, questioning their faith, um, questioning just what it means to be an individual in, in that age or an adult, and as they go into university or post-secondary and or into the working world and I start to see well how can I start to do that in my classroom. Multiliteracies as it sort of comes into play in classrooms is really an attempt to draw upon these broad notions of literacy thinking for example of the arts and other kinds of representational forms as meaning making forms as text based forms that, that have a place in the classroom as well as drawing upon that multiplicity of rich resources that children bring to classrooms with them. It's a really interesting experience to work with so many different types of people. Um, it was really amazing how we all seemed to come together in this common goal, even though we were so different in a, in a lot of ways, in, in where we were in our lives, um, in where we were in the teacher-student uh, relationship. Me as a student, I, I was so shocked that um, teachers who maybe to me had seemed cold before or, or more authoritative were, were now um, being so kind and, and, and really connecting to me in a, in a personal way. And uh, I think that the art, arts-based approach really had a lot to do with that. Art allows the viewer, whoever it may be, to have their own ex experience and their own perspectives change what that, that art means to them specifically. When it comes to visual art, um, the, it just it opens up this dimension that I think written text can only do so much, um, whereas visual art just it's, it's infinite, I believe, in its perspectives, and it can reach a, m a much more varied audience, people who cannot read, people who do not read English, in a way that I think is just phenomenal. We painted hundreds of triangles. So you can imagine 30 times however many triangles. I imagine there are some individuals that painted a dozen or more, right? Um, and. Um, those triangles became a basis for developing a, a color scheme for the three large triangles that we painted later. So in that first class, it was only triangles. The second four-hour class, we had an opportunity to return to those triangles and make some color choices. Um, and interestingly enough, the youth and the adult teachers did that process separately and came, to, came up with the same three colors. chose the ladders in part because the youth were part of a faith-based leadership group and they really had a lot of questions about faith as it relates to Elie Wiesel's experience in the concentration camps. So what does it mean to maintain faith in the face of a godless universe? And that final painting, the Kaddish painting, that was something that was particularly important to me. Um, my, my grandparents are both Holocaust survivors on my father's side of the family. Um, and the Kaddish in the Jewish liturgy, Kaddish means holy, but Kaddish commonly means, um, refers to the mourner's Kaddish, the prayer that's said over the dead. 
And there are some extraordinarily poignant passages in Night where Elie Wiesel recounts that this is the first time in human history that Jews have said Kaddish for themselves. It felt to me particularly important that we remind ourselves amidst all of the multicolors and the celebration of diversity that there is this deeply mournful sense of uh, obligation that we have to the memories of those who perished, as well as the legacies of those who survived the Holocaust. The exhibition, being at Heart House, is, is uh, not just interested in the art that we produced. Um, and I mean, much, we, we talked much about the, the, the work of it itself and kind of creating those sorts of things, but, but um, choosing where we were going to display it was a, was a pretty enormous task. And um, I think many times galleries are often just interested in the work that they display, and, and they're seen as sort of a blank canvas on which to project some sort of other uh, images or, you know, whatever the art might be whatever kind of mode that is. Um, but Heart House is, um, it's steeped in, in a lot of history, and particularly around war. So Heart House was opened uh, in 1919 on, on Remembrance Day, uh, just after the First World War. And so um, from that point, um, it's kind of been a beacon of ever Remembrance Day, you know, ever since for the last uh, however many years. Soldiers Tower is adjacent to us as well, and the War Memorial. And so sort of, sort of a certain sort of theme of, of war that, that kind of transcends the building um, and then punctuates it in different kinds of ways. For me, it was one of those moments where when we had the, the pieces up and we had a chance to kind of I had a chance to bring my family, my wife and um, my daughter, and I remember looking at the ladders and seeing the, the Hebrew text and seeing the, the biblical text together and transposed um, with Jacob's ladders and, and being struck with the, the power of that piece and the, the space between literacies. And as El Elie Wiesel says, words are not enough to capture these things. So um, the Art Space Project is, is an attempt to get at the ineffable and nature of the Holocaust and to think through alternatives to using text. Social justice curriculum isn't something that's superimposed on classrooms, but it's something that's developed from the rich resources that individuals bring with them to classrooms. So from the outset, I believe that the youth that we were working with brought a whole range of experiences and resources to our conversations. And then it would never be enough for us to be addressing the texts, whatever author we're reading, Elie Wiesel or anyone, as a, as a kind of, um, with a kind of reverential attitude. We would have to also bring in the texts of our own lives and experiences and place those texts in conversation with each other. There's a way that experiencing a kind of devastating tragedy can leave you feeling helpless. And that it's not enough to simply linger in that feeling of helplessness, but you have to have a moment where you move from helplessness to outrage to some kind of attempt to make a difference in the world. And that work doesn't stop.
Dear Naomi, Kevin, Antonino, Mary, Julia, Krista, and Josh. Thank you for your kind letter. I always enjoy hearing from young people, and your letter was no exception. I am moved to learn of the effect that my memoir, Night, had on you. As a writer, nothing is more important. It is obvious that you are all very sensitive to the darkness of which I wrote. Knowing that you and your classmates will never forget the tragedies of the past fills me with hope. You can use your knowledge and understanding to educate those who are unaware. You and your classmates can make a difference in creating a new kind of century. Keep learning and reading more and more. With best wishes to you all, Ellie Wiesel.